Bonjour. <laughs> oh, very nice. Is that the equivalent of hey? I just looked it up. <laughs> they say, and more or less it says, you can say this. It's kind of the, because I bet they just don't, I bet there's no French guy going, hey, I, it's probably not that. <laughs> Bonjour. We Welcome. <laughs> Bienvenue. To episode 44 said in French. I don't know how to say 44. Quarante-quatre. Uh, what I Alex think, said. I think that's right. Of uh, Alex and Jim. <laughs> and Alain's village lyrics. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I knew this song was going to be a bad idea, and I didn't even think of that reason. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, as as no one really says. Oh, uh -huh. <laughs> no episode that. 44 of Alex and Jim Analyze Billy Joel lyrics, where Alex picked you were the one, or how does it say it in French? C'était toi. C'était toi. And, uh, Which I picked because uh, when he, when Billy Joel is being interviewed uh, about what, he's very frank about what songs of his he doesn't care for. Yeah doesn't like playing and uh universally will say that this is his worst song and most embarrassing thing he ever put on vinyl <laughs> now, the whole cold spring harbor album now what's funny is i think he might be wrong i agree with you and i think he forgets that when it comes to great songs and bad songs they're both pretty deep benches <laughs> yeah it's true and there's a thin line. Mm -hmm. And I think in this case, the line is, uh, if he hadn't, for whatever reason, decided to sing it in French 101, it's not a bad song. It's a very pretty song. Yeah. Song. There's uh, not a lot there, but yeah, it's a great little melody, of course. It's mu musically, it's perfectly good. Like, I would say that that song we we did three or four episodes that was just clearly uh, unfinished for the longest time knockoff, you know, that was supposed to be, I think that's much worse. Yeah, yeah. The one that has the MIDI file for the um, saxophone is just, <laughs> whereas this one is musically kind of nice, actually. Yeah. It's actually a nice perfectly song. nice song. Nice little piano song. The first thought I had, uh, they're thinking about why would you do this, Billy Joel? And here's my theory Michelle, my bell. Oh, good that's theory. That's why. That's a good theory. So, for those of you who don't recognize, the, so Paul McCartney used to tell this little story about how when he was a young lad in Liverpool and he wanted to pick up birds, ladies, <laughs> he'd be at a party, he would play guitar and sing. Faux French, because he thought women love the French. <laughs> and so it was a little party trick he would do. And then if the interviewer ever asks, how did that work? He will always have some quip equivalent to not well or something. <laughs> but it was a thing he supposedly did where he would sing in a pretend French song. And then uh, John Lennon, they were looking for a song to fill an album with because when you write so many damn songs, sometimes your inspiration is a deadline, not art. Yeah. And same with you, jokes, it's the same thing. It's sometimes you're motivated by art, sometimes you're motivated by money and a deadline. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, I would guess John Lennon said, hey, remember that dumb thing you used to do at parties? Uh -huh. Let's put that on an album. Right, and Paul and, thought, oh, he, he actually likes that. Yeah. Because that's and, Paul. Yeah, and the truth is, it's a perfectly nice song, but it is also one of my least favorite Beatles songs. Yeah, and it doesn't need it. It doesn't need the French part. Nope, and, uh, and just seems kind of dumb. And it's like, I think Billy Joel wanted to do that, and he nailed the dumb part. <laughs> yeah. He just Super nailed the dumb part. Didn't nail the French. No. Oh. 
Um, yeah. Nothing. I mean, French is hard to do. It's hard to sound like you're actually French. You can speak French and get by. Yeah. But when you're a uh, Jamoke from Long Island. Yeah. Uh, it's really hard to pull it off. I think sometimes what English speaking people forget that, you know how in a person who's not native to this country and they're say Chinese, when they learn English, how it sounds, mm -hmm. well, that's how you sound in every other language. You sound like a person who, hey, we'll listen to you and I know you're doing your best. Right, I know what you're getting at, but yeah. you don't sound like you're from here. Yeah. And yeah. And it's going to be complicated to have any kind of good conversation with you right. because the limits of what you can, of how you can say a thing are going to make this a cumbersome. And it's especially bad when you're already from Long Island. So you already, you don't sound like you're from here. Yeah. Yeah. Your you're English not, ain't that great anyway. Yeah. You're, <laughs> yeah. You're bad in two languages. Mm -hmm. um, I one time, Speaking of uh, trying to impress birds at a party with your music, I was at a party in the Hollywood Hills and this guy Hayes, who was very self-involved uh, guitar playing type, had the acoustic guitar out at the party. And your friend and, named Hayes was self-involved, you say? Yes, yeah, and um, he had long hair. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and he was in like some room at a party and there were like four girls listening to him play this song. And he said something about when he wrote this song and how he felt when he wrote this song. And then he started playing the song and I recognized the song as a very obscure David Wilcox song, um, which, you know, he, I'm sure he plucked because he's like, nobody's ever heard of this guy. And it was a song called Needle Against a Vein. And I was walking by the room and he's singing along and I started singing along with him. <laughs> uh, and he stopped and he's like, oh, you know this one. I was like, yeah. That's kind of one of those moments where I'm like, I see you, phony. All right, goodbye. <laughs> you didn't call him yeah. out, shoot. And he went home with all four girls. Hmm. I don't know. You didn't Probably. call him out though, huh? No, not, I mean, I, I sang along. I figured that's enough calling out. I think if you, a thing to do over, if you, you know, if we live this life again, next time, fucking burst in the door. David Wilcox! <laughs> With the fucking, CD. Yeah. 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 Is that you? No? Okay. <laughs> so, ladies, want to hear some jokes? I wrote those. <laughs> Where are you going? Have you heard about how I'm a wild and crazy guy? <laughs> I'm on a mission from God <laughs> to bust some ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm glad you picked a song. It's funny. It's not, it's just not his worst song. It really is pretty. And because I don't speak French, for all I know, it sounds okay. I just, I just, I instinctively know it sounds dumb. <laughs> sure. I mean, you can see him. Yeah. <laughs> you can look at him and go, oh, he's not French. And now I think this is what the song does. You tell me if I'm wrong, because I did not bother to translate the French parts. I think he's just singing the English part again, right? Yes. With some, you know, some clear misses on the translation. Yeah, I hate that from anybody. Like yeah. my least favorite Christmas song, um, and then there's a lot, is Feliz Navidad. <laughs> I do not like that song because from the very beginning when I was a little kid, I've always <laughs> said, that's you, Jester, singing it again. And it bugged me. Because... <laughs> yeah. You didn't write a second. You didn't write a whole song. You wrote half a song and then you're, you translated it and that's the other half of the song. No. I'm very judgmental about this. I think it's dumb. It's pretty dumb. I will say it's one of my favorite Christmas songs because uh, oh. it's just different. 
Most of them are very downbeat. Sure. This one's at least peppy. Oh, see, I like all the bummer ones. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. I, I have always said, if your holiday has like eight songs, you can't start in early November. <laughs> you have to start later or get more songs. Yeah. Because uh, I'm, I'm silver belled out by December 4th. Do you like the All I Want for Christmas is You by the Mariah Carey? No. Fair. Don't like her or that song or the people who love that song. I have come to like her because I have concluded she's the way she is because boys are shitty and she I'm became sure. famous at the I want to say in the golden age of misogyny. <laughs> shitty boys. Yeah. And like the, the same way, J Lo, I feel the same way about J Lo. I used to kind of find her like, man, she's kind of, you know, maybe a B word. And now <laughs> I've concluded, oh no, she's a hardworking individual who got sick of everyone's garbage. Sure. So do your thing. Absolutely do your thing. Just do, uh, do it over there. Do it over there. Fair. <laughs> <laughs> Not on my lawn. My favorite part of All I Want for Christmas is You is it was a monster hit. And every other female artist, like your Jessica Simpson, your Britney Spears, uh, probably the Spice Girls, I don't know for sure. Oh. Tried to put out a version of oh, yeah. Britney Spears, beat for beat, put out the song about how it's coming to be Christmas, although she does a uh, uh, thing she does in it. She does that. Yeah, yeah. Where the whole gist of it is she don't want stuff. She just wants oh. you. Oh. <laughs> and that makes me laugh every year that I hear the different variations of, oh, I'd like a lot of money, too. <laughs> I yeah, it's always a lie. Yeah, uh, well, that's true too. Yeah, and in like our dumb lives, I'm yeah, like, oh, I just want to spend time with you. All right, but also stuff, right? <laughs> For sure, stuff. I mean, that's the gist of the whole holiday. My my wife, and this has happened. Also, before. also we hang out a lot. So yeah. you've seen me you more of this. My wife for the last not enough couch farts for you. Because that's what I got you. That's what I got you, baby. I wrapped it this unwrapping them all night. <laughs> Why is this one pulsing? <laughs> Don't open that indoors. <laughs> My oh. wife for the last four Christmases, it'll be like, look, here's what we do. We we each get each other two things. And then Christmas morning, we all open our nine things. <laughs> uh -huh. Or you open your two things. And yeah. You open your nine things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I thought we agreed. And they go, yes, I agreed. I don't want you angry later. <laughs> yeah. That's why I agree. Uh, um, we're doing the. Uh, can you hear me down there? No. She can't hear me. Okay. We do a lot of the like, let's stuff we don't need. Let's get experiences and stuff for each other, which is great. But then on Christmas day, it's like, okay, open your email and look at the confirmation. <laughs> it's just not as Christmassy. Yeah. You have to have a box with stuff in it. Yep. Yeah. And like, here's your tickets to the show. Um, Confirmation number capital Z H W H three, but also uh, uh, shoes. Yep. Yeah, you have to do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I've got. I, I not. I didn't say the real one because we're live here. But this right. is live. Right? We always we always go out live. <laughs> at random days and times, so it's hard to keep up with our show. <laughs> Very diehard fans. Yeah, it's live Saturday at noon. All right. <laughs> well done. 
So uh, we, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. we listen to this French song, and uh, it's. I'm just struck with how much he dislikes it more than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> or I think he's embarrassed by his French. Okay, which, rightly so. Oh, that feels like a real human thing too, man. Yeah, that thing that you just don't, you know. We uh, went to France a couple of years ago and um, we did a, some minor brushing up. We both took a lot of French in school, mm -hmm. figured like we have a decent handle on it. We'll brush up a little bit and we get to France. And we're like, all right. And every restaurant we went to were like, uh, uh, bonjour. And they were like, uh-huh, here's your English menu. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it. This one has pictures, idiot. I'm like, okay. Guess you don't want to hear the rest of our French. You did the right so, thing, restaurant. Uh, bonjour. Uh, comment uh, ça va le? And like, uh huh. Here. <sighs> what was that? Bonjour, you said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bonjour to you. Table for two. <laughs> uh, all, all speak English so well. That's so great. Now, here's the funny thing is about this song. You are so right that if you removed the French, it's not only not his worst song, it's maybe even a pretty good song. Maybe even a pretty good song. What is annoying is that I think he, even in the English part, is trying to feel French. Yeah. Um, it, it's like he watched a French movie. And it was like, oh, I'll, I'll write a song from the point of view of that guy smoking in the bar. Yeah. And then you realize that only works as a movie and only as a French movie. Because you look at these lyrics and like, oh, there's, there's not much going on in the English part either. <laughs> yeah, there isn't. Um, do you want to kick it off or should I? Um, I'll kick it off. All right. Here I am again in this smoky place with my brandy eyes, which I don't mind brandy eyes. I kind of like that one. Good description of his actual eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. You were the one. You were the one. So a couple things that I can say that I like, um, as well as you, the brandy eyes. Um, I, I don't mind smoky place. But you're right, you watched a movie. Uh, here I am again. Uh, I kind of like starting in the middle of a thing. It's economical. Yeah. Here I am again. All right, we already know a lot. Yeah, and instead of wasting my time telling me about this place that you go to a lot, you just let me know you go here a lot. Go here a lot, you're not psyched about it because yeah. no one says, here I am yeah. when they're excited. <laughs> yep. They say, I'm here. Yeah. Well, here I am doing this podcast again. <laughs> <Okay. Yep. laughs> that was mean. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't right. Tracks, right? You, you understand what uh yeah, I get what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh here I go again. Oh, great. Well, that can go either way on you. Yeah. Here I go again. I'm about to make a mistake. Or here I go again on the fun ride. Yeah. But paired with here I am again. Oh, probably not good. No. <clears throat> here I go again, looking for your face. And I realize that I should look for someone else. That's pretty good. That's a pretty, pretty bummer of a thing. <laughs> And, and I, I think I've been to that place where I go to, I, well, I, I know I have done this. I'm pretending I don't know for a fact I've done this because it is embarrassing, but <laughs> going to like a location where I used to go with a person and think, yeah. maybe I'll run into them. And no, you won't. They, they don't go there. Right anymore. there. Also, do yeah. you really want to? Would that be great? You haven't thought that far ahead. Nope. Just looking for the face. Here I go again, looking for your face. Ah, man, I could even tell you her name. 
looking for your face. And I'm not going to, though. It's a bummer. And I realized that I should look for someone else. But you were the one. You were the one. And now the second repeat is a much bigger bummer. <laughs> right? Yeah, the repeat is uh, the muttering to oneself. Yeah, he's immersed in this lost love. I'm assuming it feels like a story of a person he broke up with months, at least months ago, maybe at least months ago. I feel like he's a regular at, at Smoky Place. Yeah. <laughs> Smoky's Place. Yeah. Um, it's dawning on me now as we're reading this that I think he wrote it really simple so that when he sent it to his friend to translate it, it would be easy to translate. Yeah, you're right. It's, the lyrics are almost like, where is the library? Table for one, please. Yeah, and he did away with, um, I mean, in this particular, something he never did that, or certainly not very often, is he certainly likes things that rhyme. <laughs> yeah. And this one don't, right? This okay. one don't rhyme, which is also very French and uh, laissez-faire. Laissez faire, yeah, and also necessary because you're going to translate it because it ain't going to rhyme anyway, right? So you might as well give up on that notion. Oh, smart. So maybe that maybe if if it had been a successful experiment, that would have been one of the reasons it was successful is that you didn't automatically have to rhyme. It looks yeah. like he took all the steps to set himself up for translation success, and it still didn't work out. Yeah. <laughs> Make it super simple. It won't rhyme. Yeah. Easy words. And then you know, uh, it fell apart. If you were going to re record this and try to make it good, here's what you do. I, and then now, again, that's usually for our other show, but what you <laughs> would do is you would record a duet and Billy uh, Joel would sing this version he would sing the english of his lamentations of this lady at the smoky place and mm -hmm. then you get an actual french singer possibly a lady who's who's got a great french accent because she's french ah uh, yeah and you put a little more work into the translation or you she would sing like her point of view oh yeah maybe like uh, here he is again uh, time to hide from the weird guy. Um, I'm not joking. I'm going to do this. I am going to <laughs> direct message Billy Joel and tell him I have an idea to fix this song. Please do that. I'm going to. And he Anybody reads their he DMs. is never going to respond to me. But I'm going to get blocked. Oh, my God. Yes. Pretty good. Stacey Bone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he'll block you and then he'll put out the song like a year from now <laughs> with all your notes. <laughs> well, that would be uh, hard. Long I, Island of him. I need no money. I just think it would be amazing because I actually think this could be really good. Yeah, yeah. On me. This one's on me, bud. Take, take the song you're the most embarrassed at. New hit, people love it. Right? What a way to fucking go. Yeah. Full By the way, did you realize that he lost 50 pounds recently? No. I didn't either. And uh, he did his first concert at Madison Square Garden recently. And all the press was about how skinny he is now. Oh, good for him. So good for him. I don't know what he did. I, probably surgery, I have to guess. Well, you know what? I bet you he did a thing that old men do is like he he, he reminds me of my dad in the these persnickety. I bet you he just decided to change his damn habits because he hit a certain age and your mental state changes in in both good and bad ways. But one of the good ways is you're like, you know, I don't need to do this anymore. I don't need to abuse I don't need to abuse my colon anymore. Yeah. And they'll just stop doing that. Because I've had that happen to me. Like, I had a bunch of salads this week, and it wasn't because anybody told me I needed to. It was because I was like, you know, I'm kind of tired of feeling listless and dumb. <laughs> Maybe I'll just eat yeah. something I know that will help. 
Yeah, we do that. I uh, have done the opposite lately. <laughs> uh, you know what I did? I did the other thing that we do at this age, which is I was doing a really good job of doing my little water pick every night and my dental rinse. I had a very good long bedtime routine, take care of my teeth because I never did earlier. Sure. Had like good checkups going for like a year. And then suddenly last weekend, I developed this horrifying toothache. I was so mad. And I thought like I cracked a crown or something. I went in Monday morning, I had an emergency appointment. And she's like, no, what happened is the root of your tooth snapped. And I was like, what? I was doing everything. Oh. So that snapped. She had to pull that tooth. Yeah. And then she discovered the tooth next to it had a giant cavity on it. So she's like, well, we got to drill this one out and fix that. I was like, God damn it. I did all the things. <laughs> and now I have like incredible pain and I have to take antibiotics that are fucking me up. So mad. Yeah. So mad. So, so now I'm like, uh, fuck you, water pick. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to eat Oreos and go straight to bed for like a week until I'm done pouting. Yeah. And then back to business. The great thing about eating a cookie before you go to bed and not brushing your teeth, which we have all done, is well when done. you wake up in the morning and go, doesn't age well. This cookie tasted better before. Yeah. <laughs> if you really want to treat for yourself go to sleep with uh, nicotine gum in your mouth <laughs> and wake up glued to the pillow in the morning guessing that's an accident right yeah well you you're like oh, i'll just keep it while i'm getting sleepy and then you pass out <laughs> and you you know you're glued to the pillow you're super mad that you're glued to the pillow when you should be grateful that you didn't choke to death in your sleep on nicotine gum <laughs> Ah, buddy. All right. It's Fun you. I'm getting older. Yeah. Yeah, that story was about me. Yeah, I had a feeling. Here I am. <laughs> All right. It's it's you. You're looking for hey. comfort. Yeah. I'm looking for comfort that I can take from someone else. But after all, I know there is no one that can save me from myself. This is a peeve. That should be who can save me from myself. Yeah. Not that. That's our objects. Who's our people? Yeah. So now I'm mad in both languages. <laughs> and it's amazing to be this successful and not know that. <laughs> <laughs> you were the only one. I do like, uh, this is like the closest thing to a move in this song i'm looking for comfort that i can take from someone else yeah not get or receive but swipe right yeah yeah so i think he's looking to treat a lady poorly mm -hmm. in in Smokey's place yeah for sure he's definitely looking for um a situation where she doesn't know what's just sex and she doesn't know it's uh she's comforting him yeah <laughs> She, th she thinks he's unavailable, and he is not. Yeah. You got to know. Best song about that, in my opinion, is uh, Two Out of Three Ain't Bad by Meatloaf. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, nothing like bullet points. Yep. To it's, make a song nice and clear. It's weirdly, it's a, it's a weirdly silly yet great song, That's that particular tune. He's good at bullet points. Yeah. Two out of three ain't bad. I'll do anything for love. Not that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, and I like that the thing at the end is perfect 70s melodrama because now he now he's the one walking away. Oh, no, no. Now he's telling you about the girl who walked away from him. Right. And, and then you're like, oh, so. But then her song should be so do you want to continue doing that? Or you stop being a dick. And you know, and her song is more to the point, but still. So all right, so let's see. Let's see what will happen if I do this. 
<laughs> I'm excited. Me rebel say, table in fume avec me yo. I have no shot at this. Je me parle à mes mon mimi. C'est toi. C'est toi. C'est toi. Yeah. Maybe I should re-record this song. I, I think you better. We are recording right now, so we can lift this out and just put a beat over it. Oh, well, if I send him that, he suddenly feels better about his French. Right? Public service on two fronts. You make him feel better so that uh, he can uh, get up the gumption to re-record. So that's just uh, is me. Main... Just the first verse again. Okay. Me revoici, here I am again. Don't sit back room for me in the smoky place. And for me, okay. Ivre means drunken eyes. Oh. So like, was enough. Absolutely. His friend called him and was like, hey, uh, Brandy doesn't translate that way. And he's like, well, what can you put in there? Nobody's going to know. <laughs> Stop calling me. I'm busy doing coke with Bianca Jagger. Yeah, just kidding. Yeah, who, by the way, I it's kind of a shot of some kind. Mm. <laughs> uh, I'll go. All right. Me revoici. Cherche ton visage. Et je réalise que je devrais chercher une autre. C'était toi. You were the one. Oh, the English came back. Oh. Hmm. It's sinister now. Yeah. It switches to English. And is that, that's just a, the second verse, right? That's the second verse again, yeah. All right, here so I, I go. Face and I realized I should search for another one. Yeah. Here I go. J'ai recherché les fashion. QAnon, that's QAnon, right? QAnon, that's where that comes from. Autre portrait de donner, de donner mas après tout, je sais qu'il y a une Y et personne. Personne qui pousse mes souviens. Twitter, <laughs> Man, I'm great. <laughs> Let me get you the English menu. <laughs> oh, and and uh, you'll be taking this to go, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do. There's a, another translation thing. He says, Je recherche l'affection, uh, affection rather than comfort. Yeah. Um, Maybe that didn't translate either. I don't know what comfort is in French. I would guess confort. Oh, and it might be just like, no, I don't want the, if the word is the same, it's going to sound dumb. Because yeah. at the point when he was translating it, he didn't realize it was going to sound dumb no matter what. But <laughs> right. at this point, he's trying. Yeah. He was rearranging chairs on a sinking ship. And now, what does QAnon mean? <laughs> Qun, uh, <laughs> that A. It was like that another could give me. Okay. Kun. Kun. It's fun to say. It is. The if thing I... people forget when they're trying to do French or another language is that you have to change all your mouth shapes. Yeah. It's hard when you had a lifetime of a certain set of mouth shapes. Yeah. Suddenly pull out a kun. Yeah, I, I watched a video that was specifically about why um people from an asian background struggle with uh english sounds and one of them is they're just not present in their native language they're just not there so right. it's a brand new sound and and i'm and as i've always felt this way i hear somebody talking in any other language i i'm like well i'm never really going to be too precious about making fun of an accent because i know i got no shot in any other language and so where am I being judgmental from? Right. You're never going to speak Chinese well enough that somebody will go, oh, are you Chinese? Yeah. No, I'm never going to speak it. Something. I'm never going to speak it well enough that people will recognize it as a human language. 
I think you'll never speak it well enough that it wouldn't be super racist every time you tried. <laughs> yeah, that's for <laughs> sure. And I'd be like, that's not what I'm trying to do. Based and on I, your French. Yeah, and I go, they go, I know you're not trying to be racist, but you don't have to do that thing where you do that with your eyes. Why are you doing that? I'm like, oh. that doesn't help the voice. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. Give me back my scotch tape. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me try French again. Where's my beret and uh, baguette? <laughs> uh, All right, well, you, you get to take us home with the English. Ah, uh, lucky me. I'm looking for comfort that I can take from someone else. But after all, I know there is no one that can save me. <laughs> save me from myself. You were the only one. She was the only one who could save him from himself, I guess. Yeah. This is putting a lot, he's putting a lot on the ex, which is clearly why she left. She didn't want to save him. She just wanted a stable partner. Yeah. A stereo and a cream colored sofa. And he's putting a lot on the potential new lady he will find. Yeah. <laughs> is there anything how does it doesn't fade out, right? I think it pianos out. Yeah. Yeah, he's right. It ain't good. He's right about that. But I think <laughs> he's we, right. I wrote yeah. a note that I'm going to tell him how to fix it, but it's up to him. <laughs> Once I give him the idea, it's I've done my part. He needs to do the rest. Thank you. That's very mature. And he's lost 50 pounds, so we'll have the energy. Right. He's obviously trying new things. Yeah. We're trying old things again. And uh, it's, yeah. I think this, you're finding him at the moment. <laughs> One moment where he will say yes. I did something so silly, by the way. I didn't pick a song. But now I'm looking at a, all right, well, I'm going to pick another dumb one, probably. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it ain't great. It certainly. Does he ever play this in concert? No, I can't imagine. No. But. Also, there are a ton of songs he never plays in concert. Yeah, plenty. I feel of like he settled on a set of thirty that he will play, and everything else that went by the wayside. Yeah, and you might as well at that point because. I guess so. Um, I have seen other acts that will go hey here's one from the vault that's really dumb but it's fun to sing or whatever and yeah. uh, he, i don't feel like that's his thing yeah i told you he does fielder's choice where yeah. he'll yell out two titles and whichever one gets more applause he'll do that song yeah which i think is a little stacked because of course they will clap for the one that is more popular yeah all right, uh, you got a choice, uh, Piano Man or You Were the One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and he's already wearing the harmonica thing. Yeah. <laughs> Up to you guys. Up to you. Harmonica or beret? Harmonica or beret? <laughs> Adjusting the thing. Oh, well, Lord, that's a hell of a song. It's, uh, I feel like we owed it to him. Yeah plumb the depths now i like check my setup oh look at this you moved yeah <laughs> what nice you got a nice little uh workstation yeah it's, yeah it's a nice place for me to do work mm -hmm. it's new it's is it a room of your own it, well it, it could be we all I, we all need a room of our own that's true we do all need a room of our own that's where i do a lot of my uh business i do my business over there oh yeah you're a businessman okay yeah i started uh, doing that it's a brand new place for me to do my business <laughs> uh, a little home office yep yep got a new yeah. office <laughs> so you work from home <laughs> yeah okay full-time uh, yeah, yeah, I've got a new office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, do you have a big water bed that you bought with the bread? I do. Yeah, well, <laughs> for sure, on that carpet, for sure. 
There's a lot better than that. Yeah, damn that's, carpet. One. that's waterbed carpeting. Got a dumb, whose dumb carpet is that? That's a, yeah, you've got a waterbed. Got a new wife, got a new life. Family's fine. Family's fine. Yep. I'm a big yeah. shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be scenes from an Italian restaurant. From, yes. Those track the, home. Which we did, we, we talked about that song. Mm hmm. We did decide that he was doing a meatloaf thing. Yep. Yeah. Like, oh, yep. Three acts, very theatrical. Yeah. But in this case, so I don't know if we said it at the time, I do feel like it was kind of a meatloaf thing, but done better than meatloaf. It's a great yeah. song. Scenes from an Italian restaurant is bulletproof as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. It's such a damn fine song and the lyrics are fun and the, the change of pace is really enjoyable. Yeah, there's a, like a accordion or a concertina or something in there. Yep. Yeah. It it really also, is, it's like a, it's operatic. It really is. It has. It could also be so. It could be meatloaf. It could be a little Beatles esque in that way that. Oh yeah. Beatles would okay. mash up a couple songs. Day or the one life. time they did that. <laughs> Day in the life. <laughs> that was Day in the Life, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Day in the Life, if you know the quick, uh, the quick version of the story is they had both written two little songs and weren't sure what to do with them because they felt like they were done, but they weren't like, all things unto themselves. And they said, well, what if we did not your song in the middle of mine? And I went, oh, yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> Great. And if you know anything about John and Paul, you can guess who wrote who. Oh, yeah. Jaunty in the middle is clearly Paul. A thousand percent. Yeah, um, you must be excited for the new Beatles documentary that's happening. Indeed, yeah, I am. Um, it's funny. Um, I've gotten really used to hearing Paul McCartney wax uh, romantic and affectionately about his good friend John, and then you start to see the clips from the thing, and you remember, oh, there's a time when they were really talking shit about each other. That's right. Oh, for sure. Um, I like the clips where they're noodling around. Me too. They're like, oh, that's almost that song. Yeah. And then they get it. It really feels like a magic trick. Yeah. It's just old footage, but it feels like a magic trick. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, a, it's crazy because especially when it's a song that is truly great and that is truly an absolute damn masterpiece and to hear the not quite that masterpiece thing is neat yeah yeah because you're right they're they're unlocking it it's very cool to see and I'm, I'm actually excited for that documentary and i'm not as big a beatles fan as you are yeah but who is kind of not a beatles fan a little bit so i mean yeah they're everywhere yeah and you continue to hear it in everybody's music yep and so and, people are like, I don't like the Beatles. I'm like, well, then there's nothing left. Yeah. I don't know what you like then. Yeah, you're just being a contrarian. Yeah. Saying I don't like the Which, Beatles. you know, John would appreciate. True. Very true. <laughs> and that was a good John. <laughs> I, have, uh, I have a shot in the back recently. Um, I hear that. That's a that's my impression. <laughs> I'm sorry. Look, I had a tooth pulled. Uh, my whole thing is off man my mojo um but here i am Do, yeah but here i am again what trivia you got for me oh None? but i do have some okay once upon a time on long island there was a billy joel tribute band run by a guy named mike del guidici <laughs> He was, they were such a popular Billy Joel tribute band that he, Mike, was invited to go on tour with Billy and be in his band for a while, playing various instruments and singing oh. a couple of songs. And uh, has recently retired from that and now lives in Florida. What was the name of his tribute band? Oh, um, The Strangers. <laughs> no, but I like it. Okay. There's a lot of good options for names, for sure. Yeah. Big Shots. Big Shot. It was Big Shot. Was it? Yeah. Oh, great. Yay. 
Oh, wow. That you actually, that's a trivia question. I couldn't have known the answer to, but I could have gotten the answer. Yeah. Well it done. A, it was only a trivia question for you. That's fantastic. And for strangers would have been a good one too. Strangers would be a good one. I mean, a million choices. Yeah. Billy the Kid. <laughs> Billy the Kid. That's a funny name for a, because there's no way people automatically go, oh, that's a Billy Joel tribute band. There's no way you automatically think that. And then when you find it out, you're amused for a minute and you go, oh, cool. All right. All right. Captain Jack. I mean, yeah. And it just grab any title, I guess. Yeah. But Island they, Falls. So now were they called Big Shot or Big Shots? Just Big Shot. Big Shot. Okay. I think yeah. they made a mistake. <laughs> there's more than one guy in the band. That's true. So you call yourself Big Shots. And that's the <laughs> title of your band in, inspired by Billy Joel, but it's not exactly the same as because at that point, why aren't why aren't you called Piano Man? <laughs> Whereas Big Shots, you've done something with it, with the S. Yeah. The plurality yeah, yeah. of it. You've made it yours. Yeah. Know, there's, another, uh, Bill, there's another Billy Joel tribute band that used to, I don't, hope they start doing this again, but pre-pandemic, they would play on a boat that would sail in circles around Manhattan. And people would go, you go get on the boat, get drunk, and listen to this tribute band <laughs> uh, playing Billy Joel songs. And I don't know. I oh. hope it comes back. I'll let you know if I hear it. Oh, that's pretty great. That's pretty great. That's pretty great. All right, so let me tell you what song I'm going to pick. What are you going to pick? And then uh, we will shortly let you have dinner, because I bet you have to eat still. Yeah, I have to eat still. Sue, Sue's making some gnocchi. I like gnocchi. Is she homemade? Uh, ish. Okay. <laughs> homemade from frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Last of the big time spenders. <laughs> Oh, I really like that song. Good. <laughs> Let me write it down. And this one has, it's almost entirely in English, is a bit of trivia about it. <laughs> Most of that's English, as far as I can tell. It's a bold choice, but I think the right one. So you won't get to hear my amazing French. Oh, do it anyway. Oh, yeah, man, got it. Monstrously dumb when it comes to, I've taken... So I took Spanish in okay. high school, didn't stick. Mm -hmm. I, when I was in college, I decided I'm going to learn Japanese. <laughs> really? What I actually had apparently decided is I'm going to get an F in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. And the lady was very nice. Somehow, this is how little Japanese I know, that when I went and signed up for the class, I apparently just signed up for second year Japanese. <laughs> Wait, was the sign up sheet in Japanese? It must have been. <laughs> and I walked in and I sat down and I was ready to start learning Japanese. And she said something in Japanese. The class responded with something in Japanese. I was like, <laughs> oh no, this is not going to go well. And she said something. And then somebody gave her a response. And then she came over to me and said something to me. And I went, <sighs> I had no chance. Wow. All self-inflicted. None of yeah. that was anybody else's fault. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> I did not return a second day. Cause, I, cause why? Partly because I was like, why would I do that to them? They're, they're in a class. They're trying to learn things. Yep. Hump over here is no good to anybody. <laughs> Do you think we would have caught up? Probably not. No. It feels like a thing you have to lay a lot of groundwork for. Yeah. No, there was no way. <laughs> because she was never going to use English as a tool to teach me Japanese. We, I had a great French teacher in high school. I had taken French in Belgium because they make you. Sure. And you go to an American school there. And I was like, oh, I'll just continue in high school and I'll have like a leg up, which I kind of did. Sure. But the weird thing is, did you have one of these teachers? I feel like at every high school, there was one teacher who was pregnant the whole time you were there. 
<laughs> all four years. I think there was a lady who got pregnant once, so no. But I did. We did have a pregnant teacher. I feel like Madame Roger, Mrs. Rogers, was pregnant for four straight years. <laughs> it was eight months pregnant for four years. So during the summer, I might, be, was, I might be misremembering this. Well, then you know what she was doing during the summer. She was like, "Summer is fucking time." <laughs> <laughs> then I go teach, balloon up. Yep. Have the baby on the day out, uh, after the last day of school. And start fucking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> now that you say it, it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are we going to go for uh, summer vacation? Right here, baby. We're going to Bucktown. <laughs> Bucktown, USA. <laughs> uh, the number. Now, I'm, Mr. Mr. Padillas was my Spanish teacher, and he reminded me of old ver, olden days. Rem, reminded me of Bill Cosby. Okay, not, not pills in a drink, Bill Cosby, but All right. before but, we knew. Yeah, but funny, just the way he would say things, uh, kind of gregarious, silly, and and uh, he called me Snoopy for some reason. Because I think at one point he discovered I liked the Peanuts gang. <laughs> so he called me Senor, Senor Snoopy. That's awesome. Yeah. It also probably has a lot to do with your dancing. Yeah, that's true. You do that little leg kick. <laughs> that's right. I do the little leg kick uh, when I stand up on the piano and dance. That's right. <laughs> it is great how the, the origin stories of the nicknames teachers would call you. Yeah. They would really just glom on to one thing. And you're like, no, that's just a shirt I wore the first day of school. Yeah. You, can't, you can't call me. Okay, Mr. Redshirt. I'm like, no. Damn it. I was going to uh, wear a blue one tomorrow. I would have liked that much better. I supposed to, I got to go shopping for this guy now. <laughs> oh, shnikey. All right, that special was studies teacher used to call me, called me Alexander the Great. Oh, that's nice. And I was like, that's good in class then it won't serve me well uh, on the playground yeah did it cause trouble and it caused trouble and also you have to get an a now yeah 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 i think uh yeah snoopy it was one time i had a nickname i mostly never had a nickname i mean that's fucking stellar oh actually wait a minute there was a hispanic kid who thought i was really funny his name was tito and he mm -hmm. used to call me Mr. Lenny Bruce. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Did you go to high school in the late 50s? And again, why did he know about Lenny Bruce? I don't know. But so he, yeah, he was he was a comedy fan. And I was, of course, a guy who said a lot of stuff out of turn in class. Uh -huh. and was often very funny. And he thought I was hilarious. And one time I told a teacher off who needed to be told off. Wow, because I would I was sick of it, and and I stand by it as an adult, and uh, so I got suspended for three days. And she goes, "You want to be suspended for three days?" And I go, "Better listen to your garbage." And it was like so I got suspended for three days, and apparently, at the beginning of class, he stood up and he goes, "I would like us all to have a moment of silence for Mr. Lenny Bruce," <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, "Tito, that's not very funny." But she's uh, wrong. It was. Again. Yeah. Tito. That is very funny. Tito, that's not very funny. <laughs> oh, I bet she didn't go to fuck town. No, not even once. <laughs> she had, at best, if she had kids, she went to artificial insemination town. Whoa. Ew. Dumb lady. <laughs> I'm sure she was fine. I'm sure she was fine, but she didn't need to do what she did. She knows no. what she did. I believe she you. listens to the show. You know what you did. You know what you did. You and Bruno Mars. That's right. All right. She well, listen. You, do. you guys did a good job listening to the show. You should be very proud of yourselves. Really nice work, all of you. And uh, we'll we'll bring you back to listen next week. You are so good. You can stay in your seats. <laughs>